what's good Josh boy ross back again with another video so we're gonna check out wrestlemania's latest video wcw legend passes away uh logan paul's in serious trouble uh other bad news for wwe star seth rollins and other wrestling news uh somebody had asked me on uh twitter to check this out this was a, a pretty interesting video and they wanted me to get my thoughts and opinions on it so we're gonna see what's going on here i did hear about seth rollins potentially beaten being written off tv with the whole bronson reed attack on monday night raw because he may be dealing with a nagging injury so that's why they did that angle so we'll see what's going on with that um but let's see what uh wrestlemania has for us today man will bobby lashley show up in aew and aew star wwe bound hogan ready to sue and much more be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania XL. Now let's do the intro and get straight into our first story. Now first story looks at a big scandal in a wrestling promotion. Uh -oh. The Ugandan based promotion Soft Ground Wrestling has received considerable mainstream attention as fans I've been and seeing wrestlers a marveled at the story of a small promotion that was supposed to yeah, I've been seeing a clips on social media. I just didn't know if it was like a, a real promotion or not, but I've been seeing these clips like on Twitter and Instagram. Really helping the underprivileged in Uganda. However, a recent story from Bodyslam.net's Cassidy Haynes is casting doubt on many of the claims made by the outfit's promoter. Bodyslam.net's Cassidy Haynes commented on the promotion's appeal. Bumbash began to focus his marketing and promotional efforts on the idea that SGW was a haven for young orphans with nowhere to go, no education, nothing to eat, and no prospects for a better future. One could not help but feel their entire body overflow with empathy when reading about these unfortunate kids. While the details are a little too long to document alongside other news, the essence of the stories that the promoter Daniel Bambash, reportedly one of the many names he uses, has not been upfront about what the promotion has claimed to do and what it's actually done. SGW became popular after viral videos attracted fans and wrestlers, leading to generous support from the IWC and various wrestlers who wanted to support what was being billed as a good cause. Wrestling Inc. summarized some of these efforts, including a GoFundMe that raised $10,000 to mm. build a wrestling ring. The GoFundMe was followed by Madden and Mansoor's Achieve the Dream stream held in May, which saw over $40,000 donated awesome. to SGW, along with the cost of a van provided by Mansoor's mother. This was then quickly followed by Rhodes getting involved with the undisputed WWE Universal Champion, pledging to buy a wrestling ring for SGW that would be constructed locally. That's Unfortunately, cool. as cliched as it sounds, there are more questions and answers about where the funds have gone and what is going on with the promotion. This time, the money was sent to someone in SGW that wasn't Bombash, allegedly leading him to making threats towards that person. There are also allegations that despite his claims, SGW is not officially registered as a charity, that the idea it helps orphans is either greatly exaggerated or untrue, and that SGW has endangered some of the individuals it claims to help. Bombash took to social media to deny the allegations, claiming the person cited in the article is untrustworthy. Given the publicity surrounding the promotion and the amount of money donated, you can be sure this story is only the beginning. Next up, sad news as a WCW. Yeah, no, that's kind of, it's kind of iffy. What's going on there? And that's the unfortunate thing when you, you're trying to do something good. Sometimes they get muddied up with people's greed. So hopefully we get some type of clarification of where the money's going and if it's being used appropriately. Hopefully it is. Legend passes away. A legendary booker and wrestler Kevin Sullivan has died at the age of 74. Damn. With a career dating back to the 70s, Kevin Sullivan competed in territories and later in national promotion WCW where he also worked behind the scenes as a booker. Despite only standing at 5'9", the man best remembered by younger fans as the Dungeon of Doom's Taskmaster worked around this thanks to his tremendous in-ring skills and ability to bump. Later, Sullivan began weight training, developing an impressive physique that helped his career further. For older fans, Kevin Sullivan is best known for his legendary run in championship wrestling from Florida in the early 80s, where he worked as a leader of a dark cult that wreaked havoc on the area's babyfaces. Despite wrestling magazines depicting Sullivan as a Satanist, Kevin Sullivan never mentioned the devil but left things to the fans' imagination. Nonetheless, the story was pure gold and lasted several years. As Sullivan enjoyed success portraying the brains behind the factions, the Varsity Club and the Dungeon of Doom. His feud with Chris Benoit led to some excellent brawls and Kevin's wife Nancy Sullivan leaving him for Benoit after Sullivan told Chris and Nancy to treat their kayfabe story of Nancy cheating on Kevin as real as possible. Nancy subsequently divorced Kevin and actually married Benoit. Now, Kevin Sullivan was hospitalized last May after an accident nearly led him to losing a leg. 
Epaphrosepsis and encephalitis afterward. Jeez. We send our condolences to Kevin Sullivan's friends, family, and many fans. Rest in peace to Kevin Sullivan. Damn, man. Hate to hear that, you know, some of the stuff he was going through, but hopefully, you know, he was able to, you know, be proud of what he left in his legacy in the wrestling business. That's what it always comes down to, being proud of what you've done on this earth. Because we don't know when our time is up, but you know what you've done. And we're not perfect. You know, we've made, you know, I'm sure people have made friends, made in enemies. You've made some loved ones. You may made, you know, there are some people that you may not be big fans of. But as long as the majority of the people can say positive and great things about you and you left this world somewhat better than when you came into it, that's all that matters, man. That's that's the real goal when it comes to life. Just leaving this world when it's your time somewhat better for somebody, you know, and, and that's that's what you want to be able to do. Leave some type of impression for someone to be like, that was an all right person, man. They were they were a great individual. So rest in peace to him, man. Next up, Roman Reigns is here to stay. Roman Reigns is scheduled to appear at tonight's SmackDown, but will Can't the wait. August show be a one and done or the start of a series of appearances? According to PW Insider's Mike Johnson, Reigns is being locally advertised for next Friday's SmackDown in Orlando, Florida as well. Roman okay. is also being advertised for the first episode of SmackDown on the USA Network on the 13th September in okay. Seattle, Washington. Are you guys excited about the original Tribal Chief's return? Will he reform the OG bloodline? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, rumors on the Bloodline's next opponents. Is Roman Reigns going to feud with the Bloodline? While that's all but guaranteed, a recent Sports Illustrated interview is providing clues as to two other opponents for Solo Sokoa's new version of the Bloodline. During an interview with Sports Illustrated, Street Profits Montez Ford commented he and Angelo Dawkins are looking to dethrone current WWE Tag Team Champions Jacob Fatu and Tama Tonga. Anytime you get to call yourself a WWE Champion, you know that you're at the top of your profession. The chemistry that we have is off the charts, and when, not if, we get a hold of the WWE Tag Team titles, there will be ours for a long time. It's been a long time since the Street Profits yeah. held championship gold, and despite a spirited chase against the Usos, Montez and Angelo Dawkins came up short. Next up, hmm. bad news for Logan Paul. It's time for a Will it be a situation where Roman, maybe Jimmy or someone else that helps Roman, cost them the tag titles? Maybe. We'll see. I can see that happening. I can see Roman, with the help of maybe Jimmy, costing them the tag titles to make this really personal. I don't know. We'll see. I like that idea, though. A brief look at the latest lawsuit being filed against Prime Energy. Business Insider is reporting the supplier of Prime, a range of energy drinks co-founded by Logan Paul, a controversial YouTuber known for posting in Japan's forest and being accused of promoting a series of crypto scams, is suing the beverage company, saying it cut ties when demand for the once red-hot drink created and owes at least $67.7 million. What? Prime faces a class action lawsuit alleging the brand mislabels the amount of caffeine in it. In addition, Business Insider notes, last month, the US Olympic and Paralympic Committee sued Prime, accusing it of mismarketing itself as being a affiliated with the games and team usa an affiliation oh. reserved for its official sponsor coca-cola the complaint alleges trademark infringement and seeks millions of dollars in compensation prime has not yet commented on the lawsuit the business Jeez. insider story reports that despite initial success the demand for prime has dropped noticeably next up brock lesnar return rumor hey man he <laughs> he is it's good he dropped that title because he is gonna be busy with all these court situations and stuff yeah Logan, you got to focus on that, bro, because, yeah, we ain't need you as the United States champion no more, man. You got bigger fish to fry. Jeez, man. When is Brock Lesnar returning to the WWE? That's the question fans have been asking since the WWE pulled the beast from TV mm -hmm. and 2K24 following the Janelle Grant lawsuit against McMahon, Laurinaitis, and <clears throat> WWE. Now, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter reports that there have been discussions of Lesnar appearing at next year's Rumble. Whether this happens is anyone's guess, given that the lawsuit is on hiatus until December 2024. Next up, bad mm. news for Seth Rollins. Bronson Reed's recent assault on Seth Rollins set things up so the visionary could be written off TV for weeks, if not months. But just how long is he expected to be out? As we noted in yesterday's news, Damn. Rollins is dealing with nagging injuries and taking time off to recover. A day Meltzer is providing more details in this week's Observer saying, Rollins is cleared but is still banged up and is trying to get in the best physical condition. His issues are chronic but not at the point to getting flagged. 
He's trying to stay ahead of things, so we'll be taking a little time off. Mm. As for what a little time off entails, he speculated, we're not sure if he'll be back for the pay-per-view or not, but if he is, it would now seem to be with Reed and not with Punk, which makes the Punk finish even more just a way to get out of a match and having Punk lose, although mm -hmm. they will no doubt get to Punk versus Rollins at some point. The WWE has shown its savviness at delaying feuds until they can play out at a high-profile show. Depending on how much time Seth needs, it wouldn't be a surprise if WWE held off on Rollins vs. Reed until Crown Jewel. Next up, will Bobby yeah. Lashley show up? Yeah, that can be something that they do. If it's a serious nagging injury, Crown Jewel is in only in a couple weeks. It would make sense, I guess, to wait till after that. And then they go, you know, build their feud, have, you know, I don't know how many matches they'll have, maybe one or two, who knows. And then kind of build things up. I do think the goal, the ultimate goal, would probably be Seth versus CM Punk at WrestleMania next year. The match that we were supposed to have. That may be the goal, but we'll see how that plays out. But that is going to be happening. Whether maybe early next year. Maybe early next year we'll get CM Punk versus Seth, which... That's gonna fucking cook, bro. In AEW, there's more details on whether Bobby Lashley will appear in AEW and when. Fightful Select reports that the Almighty's WWE contract expires this coming oh. weekend and that he is expected to leave. The Fightful report added that while AEW is interested in him, so is Japan as well as the MMA world. Dave Meltzer discussed the situation on the Observer Radio saying, he's on his way out, Bobby Lashley and MVP both. I know that there's talk of them trying to get into AEW. I mean, it's one of those things where technically nobody can talk to them because I don't believe either contract has expired, but their contracts are going to expire. A rumor has it that MVP and Lashley are interested in reviving the Hurt Business in one form or another. Mm -hmm. Inside the ropes knows that MVP's WWE deal has already expired. Next up, more evidence that the Lucha Brothers are leaving AEW. Here's the thing. If he does go to AEW, which I can see that happening, I just don't want him to get lost in the shuffle like they've done so many times. That's the only thing. That's my only concern. Him getting lost in the shuffle. If they can manage to not do that this time, all right, cool. But once again, who knows? Some see a recent cancellation as a sign I've heard that about this too. will leave AEW when the deal expires. Ringside News reported that New Era Wrestling took to its Facebook page and announced that Ray Phoenix has pulled out of one of their events on September 27th in El Paso, Texas. Some fans believe Ray may be signed with the WWE by the time the New Era show rolls around, hence him withdrawing from the show. The Ringside News report noted that it's believed that Phoenix's AEW deal expires sometime in August or September, while his brother's AEW contract expires at the end of the year. A PW Insider provided clues about possible names for Ray Phoenix and Penta L Zero should they leave AEW. The news site reports that the Lucha Brothers have applied for the trademarks for the following names. To be honest, I'm not going to try to pronounce those. The Lucha Brothers are a team whose rework does all the talking for them, and the dynamic duo could work as Los Conquistadores and still wow fans. Do you think the Lucha Brothers are leaving AEW, and if so, will they head to WWE? Next up, an AEW star W- Most likely they're going to WWE, bro. It's... I mean, the tag division could use uh, a little bit more boost. We need actual tag teams in these divisions. More of them. We do. So, I can see this happening for sure. WWE bound. AEW is looking at the loss of one of its most promising wrestlers as Dave Meltzer is reporting Ricky Starks is expected to go yep. to WWE when his Heard deal about is this up. Too. He hasn't signed a new deal and he turned down an angle for Big Bill to turn on him where he'd been a babyface and now be used anymore. This rumor has been going on ever since Starks stopped competing on AEW TV. The 34-year-old wrestler is seen as one of AEW's best homegrown talents, and while Starks won the 2023 Owen Hart Cup and held the AEW World Tag Team Championship and FTW Championship, there are questions about why he didn't get to do more. Would you guys like to see Ricky Starks in WWE? And finally... Yep, uh, I can definitely see that happening as well. He's definitely leaving. I mean, he's, he's friends with CM Punk. He's really close with Cody. Come on now. I could see him going to NXT or I could see them bringing him up straight to the main roster. In NXT, he would kill, bro. And then bring him up to the main roster. He's he's going to WWE, bro. It's it's a foregone conclusion. And I do feel like they could utilize him really well. Ricky Starts is great. I just I don't know what I don't know what the fuck happened in AEW, but he's great. He was <laughs> he was one of the few things on the show I was really interested in. And they dropped the ball. Like they normally do. 
The only thing they have not dropped the ball with, in my personal opinion, some people feel differently. Well, they did to an extent with the MJF stuff, but I feel like they gotten back on track with the MJF stuff. But everybody else, at one point or another, they've dropped the ball with. Outside of Will Ospreay, who's just got there, I think they've done great with him. It's just they have these stars and they have potential to break out and then poof. It's like they stop pushing him or they 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 it's it's the story doesn't make sense or they overbook it. It just you just be like, ah oh, man, so that's why I'm also concerned if Bobby does go there, how they're gonna book him and will it be consistent? So I can uh, we'll see. But yeah, Ricky starts definitely what what are we talking about? He's going there. WWE. Hulk Hogan ready to sue. Last but not least, no, Matt Damon and brother. Ben Affleck find themselves in court thanks to the power of Hulkamania. DMZ is reporting that Hulk Hogan is watching the pending film project titled Killer Gorka. The movie being produced by Damon and Affleck concerns Hulk Hogan's lawsuit against Gorka after the suit uploaded a private tape of the Hulkster. Recall Hogan's racist remarks on the video led to his temporary exile from the WWE oh. and a wave of bad publicity. The TMZ story revealed, sources connected to Hulk tell TMZ he has no involvement whatsoever in the film project and is currently indifferent about it. However, if the movie treads into territory that a jury already found was protected by its rights to privacy, Hulk will not hesitate to pursue legal options, which he has clearly done before. Hogan hauled in a major payday from Gorka and it looks like he's ready to drop the legal leg drop of doom on <laughs> Matt and Ben if they cross the line. Well, there you have it folks, the, the legal, wildest news stories and rumors. The legal leg drop of doom? That's that's funny. One thing Hulk gonna do: drop that legal leg drop of two. <laughs> what you gonna do, brother? When my lawyers come after you? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> they gonna sue the pants off you, man. Ah, uh, this was a very interesting video. A lot of stuff happened on this one, man. Comment down below. Let me know some other wrestling videos y'all want me to check out over the weekend. Appreciate all love and support y'all have shown on our channel. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all next one. Peace.